Hi, welcome to my newsletter here on video for the month of September. It's been quite a few months that I have not shared what's been going on. We've done a lot of things and one thing that I mostly did is decide what are some of my priorities now that we've had a two-year hiatus, a shutdown, a pandemic all over the world and the top priority was being in nature, in the mountains specifically, and visiting with family as well as friends. Top on the priority. So, of course, needless to say, I also did a lot of recordings and I have done some marathon recordings, which I would like to ask your opinion. I'd like to ask you if you would like to see a course, for example, a 40 day course with 40 meditations. Um, I'm doing one in Germany, one for every week. So that's 52 weeks throughout the year, one per week that give the theme for the week and something to focus on, which I have found in my training as a psychotherapist, body working, psycho consciousness, uh, body centered psychotherapy, that when we focus on themes for the week and say, okay, this week, my main focus will be on a personal evolutionary journey and that they kind of tie together as a pearl. Would you be interested in having that in English? I have, focused a lot on my German audience. And just recently I was asked by an Indian app, a university in India, to join them and produce 50 videos for an app, but they need exclusive contact and contract material. And I thought, you know, much better if I just made this available to my clientele on my teachable platform, which is my online courses. So I would like to hear from you if you would like to see that. Would it be interesting for you to have either a whole string of meditations you do any time or end, put them, uh, string them out so that you do one meditation as a focus for the week. So can you write me? Can you give me a message here under the YouTube link if you'd like? The next thing I want to invite you on, and I will tell you a little bit more about what happened leading up to my hiatus with Don, where we just went and traveled and decided to close down our retreat center for a little while what came of it, what developed, I'll let you know in a minute. But I want to invite you before, you know, you go like, what is this too long or this? I want to invite you on a temple journey. I'm going to go to Egypt. I just came back with Dawn and two other friends, meditation friends who are meditation marathon people, you know, very dedicated. We went to Borobudur, which is the largest Buddhist temple here in Java. We went to Prabhanan, which is the largest Hindu temple here in Java, on Java. We are here in Bali right now. And you know, I'm sitting here on my day bed. I think you can see that. It's like, I don't know. It's, it's, it's my gorgeous Bali house. Anyhow, um, I mean, it's like to fall for. <laughs> but this is our house here. And then we share our time between here and our house in the north at uh, the ocean. So here's Ubud and up north is Shambhala is our retreat center. And I'm going to tell you what happened there and what we did. But first, before I do that, I want you to sign up, click subscribe if you want to join me on the temple tour. And I will be going to Egypt. Don and I are flying for Equinox coming up in a few days on the 23rd of September in 2022 this year, just for all of those who care about the specifics. and. If you subscribe, I will be uploading here either live transmissions from Egypt and because you're in the American time zone, it'll be usually a recording um, from the pyramid on the equinox day and the meditation that we can do together. Then I will be going on a Nile trip down to the um, Taidagata, oh, how do you say that, Luxor, the Valley of the Kings. Uh, and we will be having a lot of beautiful meditations in temple settings and or around those areas. And I'd like to have you join me if you'd like. It's going on between Equinox for a week. So join uh, by subscribing and then be alerted by clicking the little uh, alert to all uploads and you'll always get my newsletters on video on YouTube. So now what happened with Shambhala? Well, I mean, we had a few glitches here in Bali, namely the pandemic, and we had to float a lot of people. And many people of you decided to help us with the Bali Blessing Project. And we still need your help. If you feel like 
donating $20 to the cause, you get in return a weekly five, four minute video from our staff sending you, asking you to focus on your wish for the week. And then you sit in prayer, you hear the uh, Om Bhur Buddha Taswaha uh, Gayatri Mantra. And then they go into creating an energy ball blessing for you and send it to you every week, a different person every month. And if you'd want to join, I will give the link for that below. If you can afford $20 to support Bali here, we're still up north. The, the guests haven't hit the masses yet, to say the least. Now, what we decided to do, we, we got uh, a lot of our up north um, hotels had some particular issues that were, mind you, reminded us of Italy, if you know what I mean. I don't want to go into details here too much, but you know how Italy has its way with the businesses, and that's what they were trying to do here from a government agency. Well, the good part news is the president of Indonesia just announced a week ago that he wants to clean that whole sector up, eliminate all those people, and start afresh. Something got to the top. So we decided to open again. And we said, you know, we can have an estate. We just keep our private estate. If that's what it takes, we pay out of pocket if need be, just to keep the gardens. And that's what we did. We kept um, up north, we kept a total of 19 employees versus 36 employees for the spa in Ubud and up north, our retreat center. But then we decided to make ourselves available for smaller groups, keep a smaller staff, and we're keeping an eye on the development of the economy and all those things. So we figure small is better. We'll have small groups up to 16 people in individual rooms, plus minus. You can have your entire center to yourself. Other retreat centers only want to see larger groups. And we used to be filled and we are booked out for two years in advance. So we gave all the money back and said, we're done in this kind of environment, but then the government was very good here and addressed it and we hope they will follow through as promised and we decided okay we'll give it another try and we will be here for everybody that means my staff up north is going to handle and be there and then it uh, means we can take bookings for individual guests we're now having people who are coming for long stay times of longer stay periods to write the books to be creative doing their artwork to retreat, to heal, to regenerate, or uh, just simply to live in a tropical environment, you know, where the dolphins are, to go out to, and that's what we're offering. So that's the thing that changed, and Don and I took off from April through September and decided to just go into a hiatus. And we went and hiked to places, I have to tell you, I, I think doing my recordings of every day a meditation of half hour long fine tune my perception I mean the days when I did like you know every day a meditation or even two my intuition went through the roof there were moments that I thought I was literally walking in another dimension places I got to see that were in my environment mountainous environments shh, doggies uh, mountainous environments where I thought I had just hit the grade. I thought God, the, the universe rewarded me for whatever I was doing with my intense meditation work, recording this for other people. And we literally felt like we were walking in what other people might have called shangri la It's a world where beings of a higher order walk. We saw sites, mountains in America that I had we lived there for already for 30 years in the Cascade Mountains. I'd never seen. And somehow, you know, when your consciousness rises to a certain level, you get to see certain places or things open up. Timing, places, not information comes to you at the right time in the right place. That happened. There was one day where I was, again, days on end, I was recording a lot of meditations max to a day, um, where an inner voice, so it was getting late, I was feeling very driven to do my duties, because, you know, between traveling, I had to do all my recordings, and an inner voice said at like 8, 8, 8 o'clock p.m., 
in June. Uh, I said, get up and go and do a walk now. And I'm like going, it's late. Normally we go like 4.30, 5 p.m. to take a walk, maybe at 6 p.m. for an hour out in the woods by the ocean. We live on an island. So I said, no, get up now. And I'm like, Don, are you going with me? It's kind of sunsetish time. You know, it was in the, well, our sun stays up late. I can't tell you exactly what day of the month it was. It was June, July, we were there. And Don said, no, but why don't you just walk here by our road, not in the woods by yourselves? I said, no, I really, I don't know, I don't want to walk here. I'm, I'll drive to the beach. I'll, so I drove to the beach where I thought other people would be. Got out, walked to the end of where you can, you know, easily sit and watch the sunset. And the sunset was this far from the horizon. So I thought, ah, oh, perfect, I come for the sunset. The sunset was setting, 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 but like shortly before it hit the horizon, an inner voice, my inner voice said, get up now and turn around, go back. I'm like, oh, I'm seriously. I got up, turned around. I will tell you in a minute what the lesson is in it for you. And saw the most gigantic white rising moon as the sun was setting, the full moon was rising, naturally. But when it's just over the horizon, it's larger. It looms larger because that's how our eyes see it. It's a trick. It's an illusion. Photographs don't catch that. And I'm seeing this white, wispy moon rising. And I'm like going, oh, had I not listened because the sun hadn't even hit the ground, wasn't setting yet, I wouldn't have seen this. Wow. Thank you for talking to me in such specific directives. Go to the walk now, go sit down, get up now, turn around. Okay, not enough yet. It said stop. So I stopped and watched the moon, turned at the sunset, held both in my heart, cried from beauty, from watching beauty. And then another miracle happened. An eagle flew straight overhead. I want to now say in, in feet, 10 feet over my head right over my crown chakra, looking down just as he flew overhead with his white head and the wings flapping and I could hear him. And I'm like, going. I was on the pathway at that moment between sunset and sunrise and the eagle was over top of my head. Now I call that precision. I call that universal precision that means somebody's watching. Some part of us is listening. The universe is listening, and that's why my book, Dream Big, The Universe is Listening, is such a fitting title, because, and so I want to encourage you, say yes, you want those many meditations, and want to purchase them, um, maybe less than $5 a piece. And I, I think that when we attune ourselves, and the exercises I've done for my German audience go in both directions, they lower the brain waves, and activate the chakras, go into the root chakra and then back up out, and then rise up above and train the awareness of the first soul state awareness above the crown chakra and uh, satnam level, whatever you want to call it. I call it the soul diamond and then higher and higher towards the source of creation. And by going up, you practice gamma brainwave frequencies. You have to become finer and finer and rise and rise and rise. Now we go into both directions. In Buddhism Hinayana, they were thinking that that part of enlightenment, that journey upward is rather intense and most people find it a little challenging. The Mahayana, the big boat, the, for, the meditation for many people focuses on calming the mind, lowering the brain waves, which is usually associated with meditations. Uh, not wavering with our attention, maybe focusing on the breath and slowing down and then becoming absorbed and so still that your whole body and mind comes down in, in frequencies, down to the theta frequencies, and your body goes into deep relaxation, your mind goes into stillness. But then to rise up and intensify that internal frequency, which what really advanced monks have been shown to do is gamma frequencies that goes way beyond our daytime consciousness, way beyond our at 12 to 22 hertz cycles per second. Frequencies goes up into 44 hertz and higher. Some, depending on who, I've read numbers as far as 100. I don't believe anything that's going like saying, you know, gigahertz or beyond that. But anyhow, that far 
44 hertz and higher they have been measured. And that's when you go into a supra consciousness where truly alpha, the alpha and the omega of time space becomes sh shrinks into singularity and you embody all of it. Uh, it's a different state. So the two different paths, the Hinayana and Mahayana yoga, and my understanding, the Buddhism, took different capacities into account. And so what I do in my meditations, in that training, um, is to have, and I'm thinking 52, to make it 52 weeks, is to go up as well as down and to practice different ranges at different times, which is uh, what the marathon meditation journey that I just finished two days ago is about. And please leave a comment down here if you want to see that. Um, I would love to produce it. And I did a psychic reading and they said, Ilona, don't, no, no need to join other people's apps. They just use her, I mean, just so, you know, I am particular in how I like to guide people. My, my meditations get results, people, stay with me for decades. So um, the most well-known form of guided meditations is a form of mis mixture between Ericksonian hypnosis, language, rhythm, cadence, and then NLP, in, you know, <laughs> hypnotizing your mind to see her, hear certain sentences. I like all of it, but to get really deep and really high and to go into your own inner power of consciousness we don't need, we need a lot more time. And so I give that time to go inward and with practice, you will get luminous results. I, my intuition went through the roof. As I said, the talk, the presentation about the, the little story about the sunset and sunrise, moonrise and the eagle are just one tiny little bit of a demonstrative story about timing and showing up in the right place and knowing that there is another world in which you can walk and all of us can always fine tune ourselves to be in that resonant frequency of perfection, of illumination of our consciousness, of expanding our heart and connecting to the creation, to the force of God that is all around us. So in up in the long shot, what I would like to do is create that for you in English because I must say I've done more for my German audience. They were very busy readers and my uh, books were like, my book Wisdom of the Dolphin is in its ninth print. And, you know, I've reached quite a lot of people with that book. And then uh, Dream Big, The Universe is Listening. I encourage you to read if you want to strengthen your belief in the power of consciousness. Uh, another book I really loved was by uh, Mos uh, Joseph Murphy, The Power of the Subconscious Mind. And that stimulated me to write Dream Big, The Universe is Listening, um, which gives stories about accomplishments, about how redreaming the fabric of life, resourcing issues within yourself. And I want to give you an example. Um, instead of blaming the outside world, owning even mishaps and saying, what did it have to do with me? And now let's get back to our decision back in April to close Shambhala. You know, I can always blame outside forces for doing what they do. And then I say, you know, I don't want to play along. I don't, you know, I don't need that. Sorry, dudes, you know and being reactionary and being miffed. But what I realized, it took me a couple of weeks to get there, um, rather challenging. I mean, you know, when they threaten to do certain things that they can do legally, it's like, it, it hits, it hits. And after having been amazing and spent a quarter million dollars on staff, that's including, a, plus what we got with Bali Blessing. Bali Blessing covered a third of the costs we paid a lot out of pocket to keep all the people here afloat. And then to have some not so nice events happen where you go like, all right, I'll, I'll spare my words, but you can read between the lines. Um, I asked myself in the end, what do I have to do with that? I mean, geez, that's mean. I don't deserve that. <laughs> and then I realized that the universe, plus some psychics had told me inwardly, I, I heard it inwardly, I said, stop now. Stop, stop supporting everybody. Stop being super Wonder Woman. 
and uh, it's time, you know, reduce, regroup, but I couldn't get myself to do that. I couldn't look my amazing staff in the eyes and say, sorry guys, you've got to go home, eat dirt, I don't know, whatever. You know, there is hardly anything to do up north. So I didn't. So I paid the price. I had, you know, in German we say the big uh, two by four came by and said, stop it all right. And even though they didn't make me stop or didn't say I had to stop, they just wanted money. Um, it made me feel like wanting to stop. And I took that after a couple of weeks of pondering, I took that inwardly and said, you know, if I had listened to my inner guidance and acted on what I know I should have done, would that not have sufficed and be a better way of solving things rather than needing a two by four to remind me to do the same thing? Besides, I had already asked top psychic Suzanne Wagner, dot com, Suzanne with a Z. Um, I asked her and she said, girl, you're going to, I've been with her for 30 years, she's never been wrong. Girl, you either going to close down shop now and reduce and or do it in April. You could see your choice. So I did it in April, but with a lot more hardship. I could have probably had it easier if I had voluntarily done what I thought I should do. I just, you know, you can say that's really sweet. You couldn't do it. And I think it was really sweet. It just was a heavy burden eventually to bear. But I certainly had really good reasons to share with my staff now why we were doing what we were doing. So maybe that was the best way to go. However, we enjoyed ourselves tremendously. And I thought, God, I could retire now. I don't even have to work anymore. I mean, geez, you know, how long am I going to wait? Dawn is 67. I'm 61. I mean, you know, how much do I need to tell the people out there, go meditate, your life will be better, the universe will be better, let's do it together. But it's in me, so after four months, I'm like going, okay, I'll, you know, I'll do another marathon in German, and now I'm offering one in English. And by Vyasa University came and said, could you please do that for us? It's just that, um, you know, it's, um, it's a platform, it's a beautiful uh, app platform where they're promoting um, hatha yoga positions to cure all sorts of ills and they want meditation as part of it but they already have a lot of people on there and I think my style fits better in my own school and I'm inviting you to take advanced training in meditation with me either once a week or every day however you want to do it and you can do it once a week every single day I think you would see tremendous evolutionary progress guaranteed and um, what I do one thing that I do and I'll tell you my little trick to keep myself meditating is to set appointments with my meditation buddies I have two with whom I meditate every day uh, one who I described in my book uh, Dolphins Love and Destiny Amaria and he and I have been doing it now for I want to say two and a half years every single day and it is outrageous where we can go the things we see, the dovetailing of reporting back. But you need to find someone who's capable of seeing similar things as you. And then I'm meditating with another person who was um, uh, at a silent retreat. So even though our styles are totally different and you know my experience is way longer, I like having somebody who just says, okay, it's time, 2.30, nah, we're meditating for 10, 15 minutes or something, or 20 or half an hour, whatever you want to do. And uh, so that's something I do well with, the body system. Not everybody has tremendous discipline. Some people do. And if you don't, I invite you to take a body, call someone up and say, hey, let's do this meditation, uh, you know, weekly thing or daily thing with me, Ilona Selke together. So let me know in the comments below if that's of your interest and I will listen. If there is enough interest, I will do it. It's a lot of work. I, I agree. And you know, but it's, I, I'm so, I'm so impressed with what the results it brought for myself. <laughs> you will want to have those results yourself. Well, in Germany and in, uh, we went two times into the Alps and then to visit 
family because of health reasons. Um, I don't want to go into too many details, but I have observed certain things. And the thing that I've observed uh, fall on the, on the side of, well, you know, I don't publicly make much of a political statement because, first of all, I tell you, what you record digitally will be there forever. And I had dreams in the early 90s. We didn't even have the internet. We had emails coming up. It was in the mid-90s, somewhere in there. I was already sending emails out of constant contact. I had a dream that in the future, because of the things that I was trying to share about the New World Order at the time and all that, that in the future they would come after the readers of readers of my emails because of the content. So I stopped publishing those kinds of things. You see, you need to think down the road in everything you post, everything you write, everything you put out on, electro media, on electronic media. You don't know who will be at the helm at what point. We hope that we will evolve into a kinder, more benevolent humanity. And I do pray, and I do believe that we will over time but we may take detours. I don't know where this is headed. I mean, look, Digital ID and the Health Forum were just held here as part of the preparation for the G20 in Bali, just the beginning of September. It's the two together, the Health Forum as well as the Digital ID. Side by side, those people were meeting. Now, I'm not sure if you see the connection that I'm seeing, but they were here in the beginning of September and then there is the G20 in November, where all the states of heads or head of states are coming to Bali. And we will see, we will see. What I am predicting is that we will have fusion energy coming within the next probably 10 years. It wasn't anticipated. Fusion is when two atoms become one and are fused to create what we have is a small sun. And it's a generation of energy that surpasses everything we've ever had. And it's not toxic. It doesn't put out radiation and doesn't have the half-life half -life problem as nuclear power does. So a lot of the issues, even the wars that are being coordinated, orchestrated, they are to create certain issues, certain uh, choices, and make us feel like certain things are important. Uh, you've heard me say, and I'm coming up to half an hour, so I'm going to quit soon. You've heard me say that I believe we're coming more into a colder time period on this planet rather than hot. We may have irregular weather, but what I see is that we have an internal core that is being pulled due to magnetic flux that is from a large body. Now, planet X is not visible. I think it's potentially a brown dwarf or a black hole that comes around rhythmically and pulls havoc on the earth and pulls the tectonic plates, pulls uh, magnetic cores and creates the ice age coming and going and different things potentially. I am not 100% sure about that, but I believe that what we have in my vision, I, I got that, it's a, our magnet is internally moving, so the entire magnetism is changing because the Antarctica is freezing, as far as I understood, on one side and thawing on the other side. We have other areas that do the same. We have more cold fronts coming sooner into areas where we didn't used to have it. Uh, Europe is getting a cold snap ASAP now. And these things, you know, like we were in Seattle. I, you know, when they say we have had, what, 90 degree weather, I think that was a total of seven days. We had mostly, I, I was so freaking cold. I was... <laughs> It, living in the tropics, it's hard to go back. We were here for a couple of years during the pandemic. And if I were to say I've never had as cold of a summer in the Northwest as this last year, we'll see. I think we'll have an ice age and potentially in Europe, the collapse of the Gulf Stream, potentially causing a cooling down of the Northern Hemisphere that would affect North America, especially Northeast America and Europe. Um, you do what you wish with that information. Look into your own crystal ball. Meditate a lot, you'll see, and get a lot of information. Uh, calming your mind and connecting to a higher source is all that it takes, because God is waiting to discover itself 
It's produced, this creation, and your eyes are what God created, put out into the universe to look back at itself and say, I am one with the Creator. And that's the Creator talking through you. And so when you are deep in that state, that part of the divine is individualized as you, as well as unified with the unity of itself. And that feedback loop is a love affair, a dance of recognition of itself, through itself, but as the dance of the individuated with the whole. And so that becomes love. Love is when two can merge into the same space. And that is an attempt that many humans strive at, and you can practice it every day. I have some of those guided meditations coming in that 52-day course. It's a, either a year course or 52 meditations in a row where two become one, that's where love exists. And whether you do a little bit, overlap a little bit or a lot, creates the intensity differential. But you know, with babies, they don't have the formed ego state. It's so easy to just feel like they're one with us, right? And we're one with them and it's like so beautiful. Like it's all like the universe is straight talking, staring at your eyes. So wherever you can create that sense of opening and interaction with the universe and have the it staring back at you through whatever other eyes or means or fields, whether it's the field of creation or particular eyes you're looking at, God is looking at you as God is looking at whatever else you're looking at. So let's do more of that. That's what you take with you from this world. And um, that's what will matter the most. That's your powerhouse of creation. That's where you can turbocharge your manifestation power within the matrix and always be at the right place in the right time and listen to that intuition. All right, it's been half an hour. I thank you very much for your time. And please comment, please subscribe and come with me on the temple tour to Egypt starting here on Equinox. If you're late to listen to this, no matter, it's okay. Yeah, I will have it in one channel called uh, the Ilona around the world or something like that and then you can watch it at any time thereafter and join in the wisdom sharing and inspiration and a short meditations that I will guide from there. Namaste. I'm happy that you are here. I wish you all the best and have a beautiful equinox. Bye-bye.